welcome to episode 106. There is no better time than right now to plan your vacation getaway. Don't have the time to plan? Use the friendly travel agents at 3D Travel Company by going to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and clicking the Book Now button today on the left-hand side. Hurry and plan your trip today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is the voice of Rini from Sailor Moon. Stay tuned after this clip for an amazing interview with our special guest. It's my mom's hairstyle. Hmm. What did you say? Just forget it, lady. I don't have time to waste. Just give me the silver crystal. I know all about the Imperium silver crystal. I want that crystal now, understand? So just hand it over, Blondie. Hey. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today, it is my distinguished honor to welcome Tracy Hoyt to the show. Tracy, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my absolute pleasure, Trent, and thanks for having me. Hey, it is my pleasure. After speaking with some of your other fellow Sailor Mooners, um, it's been uh, a long time coming. I've been waiting to speak with you. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I actually just saw one of the Sailor Scouts this morning. I have an audition. I saw Katie Griffin. Oh, wonderful. Sailor Mars. Sailor Mars. That's Absolutely. right. <laughs> Sailor Mars. <laughs> so, so she talented. is a sweetheart. Such a talent. Yeah. Well, today we are here to talk about you, Miss Tracy. So uh, let's dive into you a little bit. The very first thing we always like to do, Tracy, when we have a new guest on the show, especially, is to get a little background on them. And Tracy, who was the young girl, Tracy, growing up into the woman you've become and, and the actress and more specifically the voice actress that she became? Oh, my goodness. What a cool question. Who was Tracy, the little girl? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Tracy the Little Girl was the little girl who was uh, writing, directing, and producing little shows with her <laughs> siblings and cousins. I'm talking about myself in the third person, which is Cute. very weird. No, but, it's okay. Yeah, That's fine. We did things like The Wizard of Oz, you know, where we'd make my little baby brother, Gary, play one of the, the woodsmen or something. I don't know. We, we, I would do the casting and the directing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did a lot of stuff like that. would make our parents and, you know, aunts and uncles watch. So it started pretty early. My mother always said that she knew when I was about three that I was a performer. I was a mimic, so I loved imitating voices I heard on television. I loved imitating commercials, ironically, which is what I do a lot of these days. Um, I, d I loved pretending I had accents, so I, was, I just had a good ear for, for voices, and so I think just what I loved doing as a child playing it was, it was kind of a no-brainer that this would be what I would do for my career. So <laughs> uh, that led to high school theater arts and studying acting starting from about age 16 outside of school here in Ontario in Canada. And then I went to the Banff School of Banff School of Fine Arts in Alberta, a beautiful arts facility in Western Canada. Then I went to York University, got my theater degree and, and I've never really stopped training. I still to this day take classes as an actor. I always try to stretch myself. So I, I it never really stops for me. And I've now been acting 30 years this month, which is, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. So <laughs> it's been a long journey and, and I'm, in many ways, I always feel like I'm starting all over again every year. And, and so this is my little anniversary month and I'm, I'm kind of embracing that. So I, I make, I'm always very curious to see what's next and what I'm meant to do next. So yeah, it's all good. I'm very excited to do what I do. And little Tracy is still a very big part of what I do since I play so many children <laughs> and animals in animation work. So it's, it's kind of funny how things come full circle. Absolutely. That's a long answer, Trenton. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is most fascinating and most interesting, you know, especially about the adaptation of, uh, you know, listening to other people and taking on the tonage or the sound that they have. Mm. Um, you know, it can definitely come in handy when you're, you know, trying to get different gigs and kind of help your repertoire of voices, I'm sure. Yes, it was also great for breaking dysfunctional family tension at family functions. And <laughs> <laughs> it was, I always knew, I, I didn't, I think I just knew how to get a laugh, and that was something I knew pretty early on in my life. And as I got older, I realized what a what a gift that was, and how special that was. And then I got a little more particular about who could hear 
that stuff. And yeah. so it became a little more, uh, I became a little more selective about it. Um, <laughs> it was also very interesting to have to explain that to my parents when they wanted me to do party pieces at family functions. But um, <laughs> yeah, definitely having an ear for, for other people's voices has been a, a skill that has served me well. And I'm very, very lucky to have that. So yeah. And my dad was in radio, so I was already obsessed with voices and my oh, dad wow. did radio commercials and he did television when I was a very small child. So I was fascinated by all of that. So yeah, I had a bit of a role model there to follow as well. <laughs> <laughs> well that's fantastic. Well, Tracy, you know, one thing you mentioned about education was uh, that you're still continuing to teach and to learn yourself uh, as a as a student of the art because, you know, things are always ever changing and ever growing and there's always things you can learn new that you didn't know before. And it was funny because one day when I was talking to my dad, I was think I think it was right about time to graduate from high school. I said, thank God I'm almost done with school. He said, son, there's not a day in your life where you won't learn something and you'll be in school the rest of your life. And I just went, oh, <laughs> he smashed my hopes and dreams with that yeah. comment. But, you know, it's very true. You know, we do learn. Uh, it is best for us to learn, especially when we are specifically going towards something specific. Uh, we learn stuff every day, but when we specifically go to learn something, um, we're just learning exponentially, even after we're out of schooling. So oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm thinking, you know, today I had a voice job and um, it was a, you know, a 30 second radio commercial and we were there for over four hours. And most of the job was about waiting gracefully, you know, yeah. waiting professionally, waiting in the waiting room to go in, um, waiting afterwards for client approval. That even that is a learning opportunity, a way of getting to know your peers in a different way when you have that kind of luxury of time to just sit and surrender to waiting. <laughs> and, Absolutely. You know, that, that's been a, that's been an interesting journey as well as a performer. You know, you're not just performing when you're in the booth or when you're on set or on stage, you're, 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 you're sort of a role model wherever you happen to be and you're an example to others. And that's, that's something I think about my parents a lot in those moments about how do I want people to remember me? And, you know, whether it's when I'm working or not, it, it's, it's, I think that's part of our learning as well. That sounded heavier, sounded heavier than I meant it to sound, but <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate all of that that you've shared with us. It's really deep. It's really rich and I appreciate it immensely. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> well, you know, something we've kind of hinted at that people may be wondering what we're talking about was some of the Sailor Moon cast members that we've had previously. And you played on that show as well as Serena's daughter, Sailor Moon's daughter, uh, Rini, also known as Chibiusa in Japanese. And uh, what was it like for you getting to play on that show? You were the first Rini to voice yeah. uh, or the first person to voice Rini's character on that show. And uh, what was it like for you to get to be a part of that cast? Um, well, the cast were, they're just incredible performers. And, and I, like, like Katie this morning, I see them all the time. Linda Ballantyne, I see regularly at auditions. We're often up for the same stuff. And Toby, I see around, we're actually neighbors. I see him in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, we're all still here. Susan and I used to live in the same part of town here in Toronto. You know, for me, that was really my introduction. I mean, at the time I was, I was mostly doing, uh, English dubbing from Japanese anime. So, uh, I had done Karopi and Friends, which was an adorable ca preschool cartoon. So I had a little bit of experience. And Rini for me was was really challenging because mostly, I still joke about this to this day, she did so much yelling and battle crying and running and panting. And a lot of the challenge was just keeping up my energy, and which I think <laughs> we can talk about with you as well. Like it, Some of those sessions, we were doing a lot of material in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So technically, it was a really good challenge. I loved, loved, loved when they would play us the scene in Japanese so I could actually get a sense of the emotional journey she was on or what was happening physically or action wise. And then immediately having to, to, you know, mimic that back as truthfully as I could in English, um, was a really fun challenge. And, and I love, I, you know, a lot of us discovered very early on that it was at the time it was called the rhythmo band method, which sounds very strange, but it was, it was very complicated, actually very rudimentary yet strangely complicated technique where we had to, speak the words that were written on a, on a little strip of, um, I can't even explain it to you. It was like looking at a film strip yeah. and we, and there was a dark, like almost like a magic marker line on the left. And as the word went through the line, we would say the line. So if it was panting, it would be, <laughs> <laughs> when Chris said pant, I would have to pant or come on, crystal moon power. And I'd have to keep yelling as long as that line was 
was going through the big thick line. So it was very technical. And as we learned in the audition process, some actors could do it and some could not. And I was one of the lucky ones that could do it because I just, I am, I'm a girl who loves structure. I love when something has to be done in a time limit or when there's some kind of crazy challenge like that. So I actually loved that part of it. And, um, we did a lot of group recording. We often played incidental background characters. And I remember being with very, very gifted actors like Julie Lemieux, uh, you know, in these group settings, playing these incidental characters and just trying so hard not to laugh. We were having so much fun. So we, when we were, we were often alone. So when we were in those group situations, it was really fun to feel like we had the support of the rest of the cast. And yeah, I played other characters. Like I remember playing a Russian ice skater and, you know, just <laughs> All these opportunities to do dialects and different things. So yeah, we, it was crazy. It was fast and furious and it was really, really silly and fun. Absolutely. And as I've mentioned to some of the others, you know, Linda Ballantyne and Katie Griffin and Toby, uh, Susan Roman, you know, I told them all that Sailor Moon was and is my first anime and it is my first love uh, oh, because it was my introduction into the anime world. So, Oh, that's so cool. Absolutely. You know, it was just, you guys were so iconic in my life because, you know, that was like, whoa, you know, what is this? You know, I knew it was different. I didn't know why it was different, but I loved it. And ever since then, I've, I've loved anime. And, uh, you know, there's been other amazing animes, but that one was just so unique because it was really, in essence, the first of its kind because anime was so new 20 years ago. Mm, absolutely. So would you watch it after school or like what time of day? Do you remember what your, your little ritual with it was? I didn't necessarily have a ritual. It was just kind of like whenever it was on, you know, because my parents weren't like super, <laughs> too particular about like, you know, Hey, it's three o'clock or whatever. Let's watch cartoons, yeah. you know? Um, so it was kind of more of one of those things that I just caught here and there, um, yeah. especially at friends houses. And so, um, my parents were kind of like not anti-television, but they were very cautious as to what we watched when we were younger. Yeah. So I, I saw a lot of the things I grew up with loving more at friends houses than anything, <laughs> but, uh, and it becomes more of a thing when it's at your friend's house. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's special, you know, <laughs> even more special, but yeah, Sailor Moon was always an amazing show and, uh, I didn't necessarily always understand what was going on, but <laughs> I knew it was amazing. And, and seeing the girls transform and stuff was just super awesome. And guess what? Often I didn't know what was happening either. And I was voicing Reedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that from some of the other cast members too, because anime was so new and they were like, what is this craziness that we're doing? But, you know, it's become such a, a love and a thing that fans across the world, especially in Australia and other countries uh, that have just soaked it up like hardcore. Uh, yeah. And I know Toby said the Australian fans are just off the chart. <laughs> is that right? And I know he and Katie and Linda have traveled all over the place and, and met fans and they've told me some amazing stories and it really is incredible the reach that the show has and how people are still talking about it actively on Twitter and I have a lot of people following me on Twitter who are fans and it just amazes me because it is one of my earliest animation gigs that I did so it's really wild it's, I, I think it's fascinating how it's still creating so much buzz to this very day. It's, it's just amazing. Oh, absolutely. It definitely has an impact that has gone farther than I think even the uh, people that brought it to the U.S. would have ever imagined. Oh, I'm sh I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but just going back for a second, I have to say there were sessions where I truly had no idea what was going on, where I'd have no context. I would just have to hope for the best. And you know, I was really counting on the Japanese performer to set the tone for me, because often that's what I was relying on to just you know, to use, use her performance as my anchor. And, and, but there were a lot of translation issues. I mean, apparently, I don't know if anyone else has addressed this, but apparently in the, in the Japanese, there were some rather provocative lines at times that had to be really, really, um, pared down and, and, uh, made much more palatable for a North American audience. So, um, a lot of things became squeaky clean that were not intended to be squeaky clean. So, those were always interesting moments to have to revoice, but I won't go into any detail because it might not be appropriate. <laughs> well, we, we've had some people touch on that a little bit and it's, yeah. it's rather interesting. You know, I know they're revoicing the show right now as well, as a matter of fact, and they're kind of bringing back the original context that it did have. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I know where you're coming from on that, but like you said, we'll, we'll go on to other topics today. <laughs> yeah. I think the only one I can share with you without worrying is I think one of the original lines was something like, 
I should wear the mini skirt because my legs are longer. No, I should wear. And it's like, what? You know, so <laughs> those, those lines didn't make it into the North American version, as far as I know. So uh, I am um, <laughs> sure they didn't. It was a, it was a pretty green industry back then, considering you had to have like little snippets of educational moments in the stories too. So. Yeah, yeah, about friendships and boundary setting and all that kind of thing. And grades and school and all that yeah. jazz. <laughs> I kind of like the G.I. Joe uh, after after sections or before sections before the show started, so teaching opportunities yeah. yeah teaching opportunities which is good i mean some of those were actually more impactful because they were so to the point you know and some of those really stuck with you as, as a kid um and so in some ways i kind of miss that i know in a lot of the newer versions even when they revamp the original versions that you guys have done they've yeah. cut those kind of things out and it's like why that's part of the show oh, so you know? oh, i forgot about those parts actually i think linda i seem to remember linda doing a lot of those yeah talk at the top or at the bottom of the episode. I can't remember now, but oh my goodness, it's been so long. So long. <laughs> it's been a while. It has. Uh, well, you know, back in 2005, Tracy, you got to voice a character on Care Bear's Big Wish movie called Me Bear. Do you yes. remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. Very fondly. Because it was with Ron Rubin. Oh. He was in Summer Moon. And with this wonderful theater actor here in Canada named Stephen We Met. We were, the, we were sort of the problem bears. <laughs> <laughs> I was the narcissistic self-involved bear, me, me bear. And, um, I think Ron was messy bear and I can't remember what Stevens was, but oh my goodness, we got to record together. It was so much fun because we're often alone. As I mentioned earlier, we're often by ourselves in the booth for animation. Yeah. So it's very rare to have your partners in the scenes with you at the record. So that made it really, really special, especially the songs and things like that. Really sweet. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit, just a brief synopsis of what Care Bear's Big Wish movie was all about. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> 2005? That's a while ago. If you don't remember, that's okay. <laughs> All I remember is that the main character was absolutely adorable and that the woman who played Rini after I did, Stephanie Beard, was the main character. She was the little, I feel like she was this little adorable creature who wished upon a star all the time because it was the big wish movie yeah. and all i remember is her adorable singing voice <laughs> and um and she it was her like it was her story her character storyline and we were just sort of the problem i i was funny i was just saying this day at this job i had that it's always more fun for me to play the problem character than the, the hero squeaky clean character so that's why me bear was so much fun because she was so self-involved and she permanently had a mirror in her hand and it's all about me, 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 me. Like this, every line had me in it. It was <laughs> really fun. And, um, but yeah, I truly, all I remember is the singing, the songs were adorable. The storyline was adorable, but don't ask me to plot, give you the plot line. Okay. Like, I, remember, I just remember that, that Ron and Steven and I were always up to something that was, you know, something ordinary. There's worlds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, that's God. cool. That's totally okay. I mean, you know, you do tons of different projects and some I, stick with I, you more than others. So <laughs> it's crazy. It's kind of like when you're improvising. I've been an improviser since I was a teenager. And this often happens with me when I'm in the booth. It's very much like when I improvise, I'll often forget so much that happens in the moment when it's over. Because you're so alive in the moment as a character, especially an animated character. It's yeah. so it's often such huge choices that you're making emotionally or energetically and and you know we don't memorize the scripts we have the scripts in front of us but you're you're so in the moment that it, it is often weird for me to have, to try to retain anything after the fact especially years after the fact because yeah. we're constantly working on new things we're auditioning for new things we're memorizing new things for our other work that we do on camera so it's it is a weird thing like I'm sure back in my data bank somewhere I can remember the full plot line of the Care Bears Big Wish movie, but I haven't watched it since it first came out. So, um, <laughs> no worries, absolutely at all. In case I'm asked this again, I better watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, after this, everyone's going to be asking you, "Hey, tell us about the Care Bears movie." Well, <laughs> so it's the only time I've been a Care Bear, and it was really an honor because you know the Care Bears are big here in Canada, very successful franchise, and I was really proud to be part of it for that one particular film. So yeah, it was really fun. Well, Care Bears has always held a super special place in my heart. And I know uh, Susan Roman has been a Care Bear and, and uh, Matt Hill and so many of my other friends up in Canada. Um, mm. So it's been awesome to actually get to meet so many Care Bears. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda was a Care Bear. She was in that movie with me. Um, she was one of the regulars at that time, Linda Ballantyne. Yeah, and Stephanie, of course. So that was, I think, the first time Stephanie and I were ever on the same project, the two Reenies. And that was kind of neat. 
Well, tell us a little bit about your educational background. I know you actually teach, and what is it that you teach, and uh, how can people find out about it if they were interested? Well, I've been teaching voiceover now for 10 years, but before that, I taught improvisation at the Second City here in Toronto, in Canada. Um, I trained at the Second City when I was still in high school, when I first moved to Toronto, Uh, so improv has always been a huge part of my work as an actor. And I I toured with Second City uh, when I came out of theater school and loved it so much that I started to teach it in the late late 90s. So I taught there for eight years. And I also taught, I loved, I kind of specialized in character classes and monologue classes, but I also taught the basic level of improv. Uh, It was like 40 40 weeks of classes and I did that for eight years. And then since then, for the last for the last 10 years, I've been specializing in teaching voiceover, specifically commercial voiceover, because that's what I've done a lot of in my career as well, is commercial voice work. And I, I now do private coaching in prepping people to do their commercial voice reels. So I direct voice reels for actors and um, coach them in order to get ready for those. So I love that one-on-one kind of work with people in the studio. And I also love working with actors who've been acting their whole careers but have never been in a, a booth before. So it's really, really a huge honor to work with people and just help them fine tune their choices so that they're kind of the right size and tone to be in a studio. Um, and it's been really gratifying for me as a performer to also be a teacher for almost 20 years now because it's the two things have always served each other for me. Like the teaching makes me all the more grateful to be in the booth or on set when I'm working as an actor. And whenever I'm performing, I'm fully aware of what I teach my students when I'm there. So it's, a, it's an interesting responsibility to kind of be in both, to be wearing both hats. But I've, obviously, I, I've separated those things very clearly when I'm out in the world, depending on the role I'm playing. So yeah, they've, it's been a, a real gift to me to be teaching. And it's made me more excited to be a performer since I've been teaching, which has been really exciting. And I don't intend to stop. I, I love directing and coaching as much as I love performing. So that's a really lovely lovely and lucky place to be. So yeah, it's great. I work with really lovely people, really, really talented people. Well, that is fantastic to hear, Tracy. I know through, you know, when I created my show, one of the statements I, I made was that I wanted to educate, motivate and inspire people. And Love it's, it, it's, thank you. You know, and it's funny because as I've taught people, I've learned so much because I created a podcast about something I had a passion in and I didn't think I would learn so much, but I've grown so much since I started doing this podcast. And it is amazing how through teaching, we learn at the same time. Absolutely. And <laughs> it's funny your your three words are almost identical like that's a, I, I've written those words down in my journal in the morning to say oh, that's my goal for tonight's session or that's how I'd like <laughs> this person to feel by the end of their session or you know because it's important you know I, I just said this to a, a lovely actress I was working with this afternoon I said to her it's kind of like being a parent like I, I'm very lucky I have three stepchildren and I, I try to be the parent, kind of the ideal parent I wish I could have had, but also the realistic parent and the honest parent. I feel the same way about teaching. I, I want to take all the best teachers I had and only share that stuff, you know? <laughs> I want to take the best of what I got from the best teachers and give those tools to other people so they can bring the best out in their own work. And that's that's a really cool thing to be able to do, and it's it's a huge privilege to do that. But I love that you're learning so much from doing I mean, how could you not? You're yeah. You're you know, you're, you're learning new skills every time you do this, right? That's the beauty of repetition as well, that you get, you get more confident every time you do it. And you think of new ways of asking a question or you, you know, that's the beauty of, of having any kind of creative outlet. There's always a chance to refine and revise what we're doing and to try new things out and, you know, say that, that didn't work, but I'm really glad I tried it anyway. You know, (laughs) or I never would have thought of that, but that was actually really cool how that happened, you know? So that's, I think it's great what you're doing. I'm so curious to know how many episodes you've done now. To date, we've aired 106 episodes. It's really hard to believe. Wow, that's fan- that's a huge accomplishment. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work, but it's been a lot of joy for me in my life uh, to know how much it's, uh, you know, it's been fun for me. It's been educational for others. I've had a lot of great comments, a great support. Um, and just within the last two weeks, my Facebook page went up 250 likes. So oh, things are growing really quick. <laughs> so great. Well, I'll have to follow you now after this. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'd love that. And uh, I don't know if I'm following you yet, but I definitely need to if I'm not. <laughs> All right. We'll work that out later. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, speaking of social media, that's a great lead in. Thank you, Tracy. Um, You know, what is your social media and how can people reach out to you if they have questions or maybe they even want to hire you for a project? 
Well, I have a website now, tracyhoyt.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y-H-O-Y-T.com. There's a, a letter icon on the home page if people want to email me directly. There's lots of information about what I do as a performer, what I do as a coach and a director. You can hear my own voice reels on there. You can see my on-camera reel. You can find out a bit about you know, what's involved with my coaching. And then if people want to work with me, they can email me and I can send them my rates and more information. On social media, I'm on Twitter. Um, in terms of my voice teaching and directing, I'm Tracy Hoyt Coach. And um, I, I have a personal Twitter as well, Face Value West. But a lot of my Sailor Moon fans follow me on both. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep them separate for a while, but it's just not. It's just not possible. They're, like I know that doesn't. I don't mean for that to sound um, arrogant, but there. It always amazes me how many people find me because I have a kind of Face Value West is kind of an obscure name for my Twitter handle. Uh, it's the name of a show that I did a couple of summers ago. Um, but my name is under. You know, if you search my name, you can find me. Um, I'm on Instagram, but that's more personal. So I don't do, it's not really a fan thing, the Instagram. So I'd say the fan thing, probably the most appropriate one would be Tracy Hoyt coach. Cause that's where I, I post voice related things. I also have a blog on my website about voiceover called inside voice. And I love when people send me smart questions about voiceover. In fact, I, I got this lovely, um, message from a, an actor, a, a student actor in Alberta, Canada, West, Western Canada, who, who had a whole bunch of really smart questions for me for a course he was taking in his theater program. And I asked if I could use his questions for my blog. So there's a whole series of these amazing questions from this student named Michael Bentley in Red Deer, Alberta, that I answered over the course of several months. So I would, I would welcome people and uh, sending me questions because I love to talk about voiceover. I love to talk about animation and commercial voiceover, narration, video games, whatever people want to talk about. Although video games is not a specialty of mine, I'm becoming more and more fascinated by it because I've been starting to audition for it a bit more lately. Um, but yeah, it, people can look at obviously uh, previous blog posts about, you know, voiceover that I've posted before. So yeah, so I hope that's enough info to oh, give yeah. people a point to reach me. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you sharing all of your social media aspects with us and how we can reach out to you. What is some brief advice that you have for us today, Tracy? Somebody that's an admirer of your character from Sailor Moon or just uh, a fan of this episode for uh, the fact that you're just that amazing. What is uh, the one piece of advice you would have for them um, if they're looking at joining this crazy world of acting or, or voice acting? Well, you know, Voice actors are actors. That's the biggest thing I want to say. And, you know, it, having acting training is incredibly important. Uh, improvisation training is an incredibly helpful tool because there is so much Im improvised work within an animated project. When you think about a character's laugh and all the physical things they do and falling and running and all those, you know, just have, having the ability and comfort to be able to say yes to anything that's why improv is such a great skill because it's all about saying yes to whatever's thrown at you and not feeling embarrassed, fully committing to your choices. So if anyone's serious about it, you know, train as a performer, get as much experience as a performer, whether that's starting out doing uh, community theater uh, or, or getting involved in your theater program in your high school, your college. Um, there's all kinds of extracurricular community, you know, theater projects in, in many, many communities. So I'd say, yeah, just get involved and get on stage and get any opportunity you have to be in a sound booth or if you know people who work in radio any any opportunity say yes to that and you know my biggest advice is if you want to be a performer go get a degree in performing go go for it and it, so I did a reel for an actor recently he didn't go to theater school but he's been taking acting classes since he finished high school and he's an extraordinary actor he was acting as a child and he hasn't stopped acting he's probably now in his late 20s and He's a wonderful actor, so you don't have to go to theater school. There are other ways to do it, but my advice is to ask around, talk to other people who've worked with those teachers and directors, ask about programs, get information, go online. It's so easy to find testimonials and, you know, to, to really buyer beware, to really have that awareness of, of what, you're, what you're committing to, because a lot of people out there want your money, so make sure you're working with good people, with integrity, who want you to be successful and want you to learn in a really safe, healthy environment. That's my advice. 
I thank you so much for that, you know, because you, you're right about that. There are people out there that will just take your money, but it doesn't mean that they're absolutely necessarily someone you need to be learning from. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so check their credibility, that's for sure. And trust your gut. I, I say this to all of my students. If you have a, a gut instinct that mm, this doesn't seem right or this feels too good to be true, trust it with your life because your body doesn't lie, you know, yeah. and especially your gut. When your gut says, mm, I don't know about him. Trust it and find someone that you feel completely comfortable with. And, you know, my a, a motto that I like to follow is trust the doors that open, not the ones that close. When things flow, when it feels really easy and natural and fun and positive, that's where you should go. If there's any weirdness or mm, yick or icky, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Tracy, I have one final question for you today and we will wrap this interview up. Okay. The question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Oh my gosh, you're going to get me all choked up here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? It's kind of what you and I were just talking about. I, I, the biggest legacy I want to leave behind is that I was grateful for the work. No matter, I was grateful for every audition. I'm, I'm thinking this is like my, my uh, feels like I'm writing my own eulogy here. <laughs> I have to say that I think there's something about gratitude that is the reason I'm still working 30 years later, you know, cause I, cause I take, I've never taken it for granted. The fact that we even get an audition means we've won the lottery. Yeah. In my opinion. And, and I hope that that's what I'm going to leave behind is that I was grateful whether I was acting or teaching or doing this with someone fabulous like you, <laughs> someone who's appreciating my work. I also hope that I kind of what we were talking about, that I inspired people, that I encouraged people not just my kids, but my students, my peers, um, my directors, my agents, my teachers, you know, my siblings. <laughs> um, I think, I think that's really what life's about. And, and, you know, I, I hope that when I'm gone, people will, will realize that I just wanted to bring some light and laughter and fun into the world and also a lot of heart and integrity and honesty. And that's, that's been an interesting, um, journey because sometimes this career can be really really challenging and it can be really tough there's constant rejection so you know a lot i don't know if any of the other actors have talked to you about this but you have to have something else in your life other than just the performing because if you don't it gets really lonesome and really um desperate and that's not living you know so yeah. you gotta you gotta have a life that you love not just a career that you want to have as well you have to you have to be happy in your life before you're happy in your career. I'm a real big believer in that. So I, I don't know. This is a huge question. What an amazing <laughs> question. What a Thank thoughtful you. question. Um, boy, you've given me so much to think about. My goodness. <laughs> it is a very thought-provoking question, and I usually get the, holy cow, I never saw that coming. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting question. And, uh, yeah, I guess, wow. I, I hope, I mean, this. I don't mean for this to sound... Um, uh, ungrateful, but I, I hope I'm remembered for more than just Rini. Cause it, what's hilarious to me, Trenton is that I've been acting 30 years. And when I was first on social media, I thought, Oh my goodness. The first time I dared to Google myself, yeah. but Oh my goodness, it looks like the only thing I've ever done in my entire career is sailor moon <laughs> <laughs> because it's really what's crazy. And what's what I love about it is that I've had more appreciation and attention from Sailor Moon than almost anything else I've ever done. It's, I just think that's so beautiful about this show and about the actors that did the show. Cause all of us are still working. Yeah. We're all, you know, we were, a lot of us were just starting out when we did Sailor Moon or just newly established in the business. And when I look at where my peers have gone since then, I mean, Julie Lemieux, who was in that show as well, not as pro predominantly as some of us, Oh my goodness, she's received every award you can imagine here in Canada for her animation work. She's extraordinary. She's been inspiring me since we, we did Sailor Moon together. Even when we were doing background voices on Sailor Moon, <laughs> like she was just <laughs> so creative and made such incredible choices and was always serving the scene. And, you know, so I just think it's, you know, I, I, I'm very honored to be remembered for Sailor Moon, but I hope people remember me for other stuff too, because I do a lot of other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the teaching that you do will impact people long into the future, uh, especially those that have that one-on-one -on -one teaching from you. So, oh, I hope so. And if you do go to my website, I, it, I think it would be fun for people to see me on camera because people have such a strong perception of me as this little, you know, pink haired girl. Um, <laughs> 
but I'm all grown up now and I do, I do very different characters from Rini now. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, Tracy, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. I feel the same way, Trenton. Thank you so much. Would you give us a closeout today as Rainy from Sailor Moon? Okay. Um, I'll give you two. Trenton Magic! Trenton Moon Power! Hi, this is Tracy Hoyt, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice? Well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Tracy Hoyt, the voice of Rini from Sailor Moon. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice. I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for our special guest, Richard Newman, the voice of Rhinox from Transformers Beast Wars. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.